Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger here with you live and also on replay. Today, my guest featured a little bit later is Rob Gauthier. And I like saying it that way, even though he pronounces it different, but I think it's this beautiful French, uh, it must be a derivative of French name. Rob, I'm so grateful is here because he's a professional channel for Pleiadian, ET, and Archangelic Consciousness. He's channeled thousands of ET races for individuals all over the world. This show, Dare to Dream, won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named it one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's a high-ranking self-improvement podcast on Apple Podcasts nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. If you want to become a facilitator or go to one of their classes, go to accessconsciousness.com. The show is going to be a little different today because after we speak for a little bit, Rob will be channeling and he needs some time to open himself up to the energy and get aligned with that. So I'll be telling you at that time a little bit about what I've got upcoming in my life and as a service and offer to you. So we're going to get going here and bring him on. Again, my guest is Rob Gauthier, one of the most respected trans channelers in the world. For more than a decade, he's helped thousands of individuals receive clarity on their life path and mission through his classes, coaching, and readings. Rob primarily works with three main guides, Aradif, Trebor Yitne, and Metatron, and he also channels hundreds of ET consciousnesses. Rob is an in-demand speaker and teacher. He's been featured on Gaia TV in many documentaries, internet shows, interviews, and books for his unique channeling abilities. And to learn more, you want to go to a link tree, which is slash e dot t dot whisper, ET whisper with dots in between. And with that, I welcome Rob to the Dare to Dream show. It's so great to have you. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, Debbie. I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's going to be a great one tonight. And uh, I always appreciate hearing your voice and mm. seeing your face. And I I'm glad I could be here today with you, too. Okay, so let's get the name straightened out. I love the way I pronounce it because it has this very sort of romantic feel to it. It is French and derivative, right? That is correct. Um, my family, my dad was a family tree guy. So 1490s, they moved to Canada and then moved down here where I live now, Michigan, and kind of centralized around Michigan. I know a lot of Gauthiers uh, or Gautiers or however uh, it's pronounced for most people uh, in Louisiana too. But yeah, it, it's it's not uh, very common in, in America, but in France, it's pretty pretty common name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. And that's a pretty like wild bio, over 300 ET consciousness. Can I ask you how old these beings are and are they your star seed family? How do they know to connect with you? Yeah, see now the, these beings at this point, I think it's over a thousand, uh, honestly. Um, the 300 was a guesstimate uh, a while ago, probably about a year or so ago. Um, but it's probably over a thousand at this point. And it's not that I found them or they found me. My guide, uh, Treb, and my other guide, Ardiff, uh, those two beings are the ones who kind of helped me connect to those beings. So I, I channel Treb and I channel Ardiff and Metatron and the Nihal Collective. And those are the four I can connect to. Uh, just by thinking about it, feeling into it, you know, connecting to their specific vibration with the techniques that I use that are individual to each of them. And then uh, our different Trev are the ones who really get connecting outward for me. So it's almost in a sense, I'm channeling them and then they're bringing these beings to me. And the reason why it's been so many is because, uh, you know, most of my channeling I've done in my life has been for personal sessions, private uh, engagements from people who purchase sessions. So they come to me uh, and they say, you know, hey, I want to know about one aspect of my consciousness or, hey, I keep dreaming about 
one being over and over, or, hey, I'm getting a name, but I, I can't really pull in more. And then Trev and Artif are like, yeah, that's this being that you're talking about. And then they bring them into the conversation. So I say I, I channel them because I do facilitate that energy and I do connect with the, those beings directly. And, and they're speaking through me, which is not the same form of communication uh, that Trev or Artif would do. Um, even my own guides, you, you can hear all four of them and know exactly who's speaking because their voice presents differently, their energy. And all of these other beings have similar uh, energies to that. They're, they're speaking with their own word choices, with their own dialect, with their own uh, vocal expression and vibration translation through my body. Um, and I know uh, that's kind of a funny thing itself, but uh, that, that all occurs. So it's very distinct to tell the difference between one and the other. And through people's own curiosity and their desire to find their own energy and guides, that's how I, I've ended up channeling uh, so many beings at this, at this time now. I've been doing it since 2010. So it's been, been a few years now. <laughs> wow. That is, first of all, the sound of that, the fact that somebody can come to you and say, I'm having this experience or there's curiosity, I'd like to connect with, or I'd like to know who this is, and that you have the ability to tap in as a trans channel to whatever that energy is and give it a voice for a client. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. And how satisfying for somebody who comes to you and feels actually shut out of completing that conversation to have you to be the conduit. Like, bravo. Yeah, well, it, it is a beautiful tool to use. And, uh, you know, most people who find that uh, end up feeling fulfilled. And, and it's something that gives a lot of people a lot of healing. For me, uh, it's the same principle, because I trans channel, I, I don't know what the conversation is, unless someone, you know, says, hey, this is what we talked about, or hey, you know, please use my session to, to put on your YouTube to show other mm. people. Um, so I don't even know, some people don't record their sessions. So even if, mm. if uh, they ask me, hey, what did this mean in the session, I, I wouldn't be able to even reference it. So um, that is one thing. It's profound to me when I see the responses of the people around me with the channeling that I do. That's almost as powerful uh, of an indicator of, of what the capacity of channeling is and the tool of channeling itself what kind of uses it has by seeing their reactions with a conversation I'm not even a part of. <laughs> so um, I do, I, I love the fact that I'm able to do that. And I do feel blessed to be able to help people with those things. You know, normally they can't. And, uh, you know, as far as it goes with the channeling and me channeling my guides and my guides helping me to connect, I've heard of other people doing it, but I don't think it's as common uh, as it used to be. I think that was a, a older model of, of consciousness from probably more direct mediumship, like um, it's, it's channeling and, and that's what I call it. But a lot of people in spiritualism churches and, and spiritualist churches, they would call it like a metaphysical medium mm -hmm. or a direct medium. And that's kind of how they process their energy a long time ago through the church. So, um, it's just becoming less and less common each year. And I, I see a lot more of conscious channeling too now. Um, you know, trans channeling was an old norm and, and now more conscious channels come in. Um, but for me, I know that I would have never been able to channel if I didn't do it the way I do with the trans channeling. My, my mind, my mental body is so heavy and so curious and I want to be a part of the conversation, I, I don't think I could have ever <laughs> learned to channel if it wasn't uh, in such a drastic disconnect from me from the conversation. Interesting. What is that process? So when you say, okay, and like on this show today, when you say, okay, I'm ready to channel, what occurs for you? What are the levels? What's the experience? So the first thing I do is I neutralize and that's what I do off camera. Uh, and that's just me singing horribly uh, to music that I love. And, and that gets me uh, to relax and it, it gets the, my energy to a place of neutrality. 
now neutral is hard for for us as humans but um, i get as as close as i can to that and with that energy it helps their consciousness come through in, in a more clear way uh, for me and then once i'm done with that and i come back i do a lot of different techniques the first technique i do is a uh, chakra visualization while I'm doing a deep breathing. And basically it's clearing out the root chakra and grounding me to the earth and then bringing earth energy into my body. And by the time that's done, uh, I start oming and that gets all the chakras vibrating. So while I'm grounded, then I start visualizing the whole chakra system uh, from the root all the way up singular and then all of them as one. And then the oming you hear is me calibrating those chakras. So sometimes if I'm having a good day and I'm feeling good, uh, I'll, I'll be, you know, the heart chakra is doing well. And my first ohm or so, my whole chest and throat will, will be vibrating really heavy. And so it's easy, right? But some days I'm not. And some days I'm disconnected or had a bad day or heard bad news or whatever. Uh, and my chakras take a lot more uh, specific attention. So when I'm oming, what I'm doing, you'll hear the ohms go up and down sometimes, or shift pitch or shift uh, like the staccato inside of the, the oming, or you'll hear uh, a whole complete octave different. And what I'm doing is I'm intuiting the process of my chakra vibration. So let's say my, my throat chakra is having a rough day, then I'm doing an ohm, oh, and shifting it up and down and doing different, uh, you know, specific uh, vibrations with it in order to get my throat chakra to catch up to the rest of them. I need all of them to be vibrating as heavily as I can in order for me to do the last part of the technique. So after I've ohmed for a few minutes and all of my energy is, is you know, normal and ready, uh, that's when I push up the energy uh, you know, one by one from root all the way up to the third eye. And when it's in the third eye, it sets. And then I place my intention to channel and boom, I'm out. Uh, Trevor Ardiff are in. Those are the ones I, I channel mostly. And what's happening with me, my consciousness, is when I'm going out, I'm going to visit Trev. So when I'm channeling Trev or Ardiff or a thousand different entities, no matter what you're getting the experience of, I'm just hanging out with them. Me and him are just sitting in an astral projected state. And the reason that that happens is he's the closest guy to me. He's the guy who I first met. He's the one who taught me to channel. He's the one who taught me how to do a lot of different things. And him and I are closest in vibration out of all the rest of them. And art is great and he's amazing, but Treb and me have a, a deeper connection of energy. And he's also a lot closer dimensionally. So, you know, Ardiff's in sixth density, which is seventh dimension. And Trev is in fifth density, which is fourth, or uh, pardon me, sixth dimension. And he's a lot easier to reach than, than Ardiff is. So me and Trev hang out. And that happens almost every time I channel. 99% if I'm channeling Trev or Ardiff or any of the ET beings, it's that. Now the Nihal and... Metatron are different, but I, I don't channel them nearly as much as I channel Treb and Ardiff. Incredible. Okay. And I understand that Treb and Ardiff bypass the Akashic records and instead they connect somehow to show us really personal, really intimate reflections that can encompass our free will and possibilities. Can you talk about the distinction between those? Yeah, yeah, the Akashic record, um, it's its different for everybody, the, the perspective of it, right? Some people see it like a library of all things that will happen, the destiny and fate of humans. Other people see it as the library of consciousness to human. It doesn't matter how you see it. The concept uh, that Shreb and Ardiff have always shared with me, there are aspects of what we desire to do as souls, and those desires are held to a connection uh, to our higher self. So before we come into a life, our higher self and, and us, the, the lower fractal or, or lower self, lower self, right? That's a fun one. Uh, <laughs> uh, higher self and our lower fractal consciousness come together. 
And, you know, cause you're integrating after you leave your body, you integrate up into your higher self. So you, so you have more access to more consciousness. And at that point, the energy is, you know, about reaching as much as you can before you set up your next life. So when you're doing that, you're planning, you know, I want to do this for the earth. I want to do this for my experience. Uh, you know, I want to be born in this part of the world to these parents, all this thing you're setting up and you're doing it so that you can have the experience that you believe your soul needs or that wants, or that is excited to do. But you also understand that when you go to earth, your free will is a, a, a huge part of that. If you don't have free will, you can't really do anything but follow a script, right? And it might be exciting for the actor if the actor is following a script that they're not aware that they're, they're acting in. Uh, but as a soul, it doesn't do much for the growth, right? It, it's just an experience that was already written and pre-planned. So you go through there and, you know, hey, uh, I'm supposed to be a Chandler in this life. Maybe that was the plan all along. But, but if it wasn't, you know, I could have just as easily kept on with my old life and, and did a lot of really horrible things. I, I was involved in a lot of, uh, you know, gang violence things as a teenager and getting older uh, after my son, after I found out, you know, uh, his, his level of handicap. I got into drugs real bad. So I could have ended up just staying in that lane and going. Now the higher self says, hey, you know, hey, you're doing drugs. The whole purpose of our life was to come here and channel. So the higher self works with that lower fractal, nudging, pushing, shouting. But some people don't listen to that. Some people will always choose a hard way. Now, I think eventually we all listen to the higher self because the higher self is a relentless part of us. It, it's a part that is supportive of us and also tries to show us what the path was set up before. So it continuously does that uh, and pushes you. So that's kind of the model that Trev and Ardiff have always shared. And what they say the Akashic records are in their perspective is this layer of the highest probabilities or the most likely probabilities for the highest good path of a human being, like what their plan was before they came here. And most humans do. They live their path, at least mostly. They live their path, you know, 80%, 70%, 65%. Um, and some don't. And, and the reason they distinguish that difference is because it, it plays into how they read people's energy. Um, so they're looking at reality from the fractal part, the lower fractal part of us, the personality part, the part that lives on the planet, hangs out. And they're saying, okay, now you're connected to your higher self and you're connected to this thing that you're asking questions about. So what if it's a relationship? You know, hey, I have a question, Trev, about my relationship with this person. Now they're looking at you and all the parts about you that are involved in relationship, your love, your sense of self, your uh, traumas, your resistances, uh, you know, your capacity to love all of these energies that are part of you, your chakra system, your aura field, your mental body, emotional, all these hundreds of different things. And all of that energy connects to the higher self. And then the higher self connects to your guides and connects to this person and, and you and this person are singular consciousness. So you're looking at that as, as a component and their guides and their energies. And it shows one big picture. And that's how Trevor and Ardiff look at this energy. And they share with you the perspective that they have about what it is they see in you in that moment, knowing that yes, the soul has this plan here and there's a good chance you'll go through that plan and you'll do something here, but Right now, this is the fractal energy, and this is what we're focusing on. Uh, and it does, for me, I've seen that be a really great tool for people to use because, you know, most people say, okay, your path, you're supposed to be a healer, right? And they're like, oh, great, I don't know anything about healing. And they might get excited for a minute, but it can also be in the back of their head. If I don't do this, I'm going to mess up my life. I'm messing up my soul. I'm not going to ascend. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And they, they, people have a, a good way of worrying themselves a lot for nothing. And I think Treb especially uh, really understands that, that humans are this way. And I think that's also why they kind of 
uh, lean towards that free will aspect of our energy versus. And I, I think it is a little bit of both, you know, a little bit of the, the higher self and soul and the destiny that you wanted to have and the free will that gets you through the experience. But th that's the difference in, in how they do it. Amazing. And I'm laughing while you're talking because I resonate so much. That's exactly what happened in 2019 when the divine came and they kept saying, you're a healer, you're a priestess, you're a shaman. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I mean, I argued, I sat down and I said, like I was at a boardroom table and I was saying, I'm not going to see dead people. And they were very, they were just so beautiful with me. They were perfect with me, with my personality, you know, because I'm not good with being pushed. And um, I just have this huge independent streak. And yeah, they were so gracious to say, no, it's okay. You don't have to see dead people. Of course, the second night they came back and said it again. And then they showed me what it would be like to see dead people. I was like, oh, it's not so bad. Okay, cool. But this was a huge question, just like you're saying, to be told that when I had no resonance at all. I understand that all my friends are healers. I understand the people I interview for 16 years on this show are healers. Like I get that's my tribe, but like me, I get that I'm clairsentient and I can use that, but me, like it was a big thing. And I just had to be with that information until more started to be revealed. And I think I'm still in process, frankly. So I so get what you're talking about. Because that could be a really big question mark for people, like an identity thing. Yeah, well, it's 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 also uh, you know a smack in the face, like you said, like what, oh, uh, what, <laughs> you know, me. Uh, even if it's not foreign to you, you know, it, it's a lot to put on someone. You know, hey, you're here to, you know, what what if that one person asked the question? You know, hey, you're here to to cure cancer. You're here to create the uh, technology that will save everyone you know that's not that's a lot to put on a human mind <laughs> yeah and then you know the next question you have when you get something like this so what does that mean what do i do with that how how does that manifest through me can you get can you be really specific so i can get right on that path <laughs> and sometimes it's just i think you have to be with the process and yourself just be open to it Oh yeah. If you try, if you, if you don't have the ability to, to, to sit with it, like you said, and process, that's the only way humans can really do pretty much anything. I know excitement leads some people and, and, you know, some people have that amazing gift of just being able to do, you know? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. I'm okay. Yeah. Whatever. Most people aren't, <laughs> you know, 99% of people aren't really even if, if, if that is a kind of a reaction to people, yes, I'll do something. When it gets into certain things, there's just so much you can do until that time comes anyway. You know, uh, if you would have told me in 2005 that I would do what I do now, just a couple of years before I started really actually working through the process of understanding my own spirituality and then going down this crazy path of learning, I would have laughed. I would have said, you know, whoever you are, you're on better drugs than I used to be on. <laughs> you know, I, I would have. And, and I could see myself. I, I, I see comments from people um, and some are really crude and, and some are really uh, just, you know, you can tell that they just don't understand. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I would have been that person. Probably a little humor with a little bit of skepticism plus, you know, even more, because I, there's no way, there's no way I could have seen myself doing anything of that, of that sort. Um, so I'm a different person then. And that's the thing. If I would have heard all that, then I would have probably thought so much about it. I would have taken on actions to, to go away from that. Like, dude, I'm not being any, anywhere around that weird stuff, uh, which could have really messed up my whole journey too, you know? Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh. What a different <laughs> human so I have one more question before we get to your channeling. And how did you get Vashta to do the artwork to portray your channel beings on your website? Because she is impossible to get a hold of. She's overbooked. She doesn't even take work anymore that I know of. I know yeah. I've wanted her to do something. So how did you get Vashta to do artwork for you? 
Vashta and I are actually uh, dearest friends, me and my wife and Vashta um, have known each other for a long time. I actually have known Vashta longer than I have my wife, uh, which is amazing. Um, when I first started channeling, Treb was like the only being ever uh, that was heard of that was uh, partially reptilian genetics and also a being who was loving and type one. And uh, Vashta uh, was really into reptilian beings back then. And she was all uh, around my channeling and we connected on social media. And then I started seeing her work. She did a lot of work um, back then with the hybrid children energy. Um, there was a guy who now lives in Uruguay who actually owns a ranch down there uh, to open up contact for hybrid children. Uh, she was kind of part of this group of people and we had communicated for a while and uh, we became really good friends. And, you know, she, she is definitely a very private person and she's also overwhelmed with our community a, a lot of the time because of how much imbalance there is in it. And I, I'm saying that to be nice. Um, so she doesn't, she doesn't, she comes on. So it's funny. Uh, she comes on social media long enough to, to anger a bunch of people <laughs> with her, her outspokenness and her perspectives. And then she goes back off for a year. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough. I know how to get a hold of her without the social media now, but yeah, she just, um, she does it now for a living too. And I, and I will say that when you're in the spiritual community and you're doing something because you're excited to, and then you're doing it as the, the only means of your income, uh, it makes a big difference. Like I love channeling. That'll never be a thing, but you know, when I've got the kids and then I've got a uh, hundred emails backed up, that's stressful. Uh, trying to create an event, you know, calling around for venues. That's not always a fun part of that. It can be, it can be very fun, but it can also be uh, tedious. Um, so I think it's a mixture of all those things. And, you know, the world's a little crazy. And, and uh, from 2019 on, uh, it really affected a lot of us and, and, you know, the energy that we see others in and the beliefs we do in ourselves. So I think all of that is kind of the perfect storm. Uh, you know, and I don't want to speak for her, obviously, I, I never would want to put words in her mouth about anything, but I just think that's kind of a general sense of why it is so difficult for people to get a hold of her. I'm just lucky enough to have known her as long as I have and, and uh, uh, be good friends with her, because I, I know she, she doesn't do a lot of communicating with people in our community anymore. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it. And what a great friend to have. My God, she's so talented. And I wanted yeah. so much for her to do like a Lyran representative of me and one of my Lyran lifetimes. And so anyway, um, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, I know. I know quite a few ET artists, even some Chamley ones too. So I, after, after the show, if you, uh, if you're set on Vashta, I don't blame you. And, and if the weight's worth it for you, that's great too. But uh, yeah, just let me know and, and I can You'll hook me up. Them. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's great thank you so yeah. much all right yeah. i'm in no i'm worries. definitely in i believe yeah divine direction you know um but i send her a lot of love because she is such a beautiful talent for this work and for allowing us to have a visual um that's a whole nother opening like you open to the energy you open to the experience you open to the knowing and then you get the visuals and i just think it's so beautiful so um, she's one her. of the best she she is the she's the best um channeler with art that i know as far as uh the amount of energy that she puts in and the accuracy with it too and i know a lot of them and i'm, I'm not saying anything bad about the other ones are great too but she's uh she's really connected into her higher self really really well yeah she's plugged yeah. in for sure all right. Well, we're going to plug you in or you're going to plug in too. And so you do your thing and I'm going to talk to the listeners and the viewers. And then as I, um, I welcome you that whenever you're ready, you just bust right in and I'm, I'm ready for you. And I'll just uh, bow out at that time. All right. I'll let you know by putting my camera back on, if that sounds good. That sounds wonderful. 
Thanks, Rob. <laughs> All right. Thank All you. Right. And I'll be back in about uh, six, seven minutes. Okay, excellent. So how lucky are we that Rob Gautier is going to channel for us? And I would highly recommend for those of you who are near a comment box, just, you know, if you resonate, if it's if and when, I'm assuming when it means something to you in your life, go ahead. Um, I'm not sure that I'll be able to plug your questions in um, because I, I really want to focus on him and giving him this lot of support and space to be doing what he's doing, but also just know I'm a sensitive. So maybe I can create some every person questions for everybody uh, to get something answered. Um, so I'm excited about this. I'm very excited about this because he's so talented as well. And just to let you know who I am and what I do, I am Debbie Dashinger, and I'm a book writing coach. So I help you go from the inception, the idea of your book to the completed book. And what happens in between is you write a highly engaging book. Another part of my business, I take authors' books to a guaranteed international bestselling status. The great news is I do everything for the author. The author has already written their book. They turn it over to me and I work my magic. And the third piece, because I am a media visibility specialist, is that I help you understand how to be interviewed on podcasts and radio and get massive results. So I teach you the entire system and there is an entire system. There is a before or during the interview and an after the interview. How do you get on a show? How do you get a yes? Do you know what to prepare so that you show up really savvy and professional? Because we, I tell you, as someone on podcast for 16 years, we, all of us podcast hosts who've been around for a while, we get pitched hundreds of times. So how are you going to stand out when you know how to put things together properly? You do stand out to get the yes. Then once you are booked, you get the yes to be on the show. What then? <laughs> so what then is you need to know how to deliver an amazing interview. I mean, first of all, you need to know how to do the content and the value. So the host is happy. The listeners, viewers are happy. And then second of all, how are you going to get a result for your time? That's a win-win, right? You're really delivering for your audience, but you want something as well. You want new tribe, new people, new followers, books sold, workshops filled, all of that. Muy importante. And I have another leg, which is very boutique, where I get my clients, just a handful that I work with, booked on radio and podcasts, sometimes speaking gigs and so forth. So it's a beautiful world I work in because who do I work with? You guys. I work with spiritual messengers because you came here at this time to deliver something very important that only you know, only you know your own expertise. And so... It makes me um, just so happy in my heart to be of service, to help spiritual messengers shine their light, find their people, get their work out there and be very successful. I have a webinar coming up, a free webinar. So if you would like to learn how to be interviewed on podcasts, I'm going to be talking for one hour and you must stay for the hour because it's going to be really content filled about literally the steps to do this appropriately. The easiest thing to do is go to my website, debbie-dashinger.com and sign up. You'll get a free gift there anyway. And then you'll be on the list. I do not email a lot, but you will be on the list so that when the webinar rolls out, you can attend and you can get that information highly recommended. So it's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com sign up there so you can get your information. Also subscribe to this number one transformation conversation. If you are listening on a podcast site and I'm on all the major podcast sites, then you can just plug me in as a subscriber so that when my new shows roll out, ding, 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 you get them first to listen to. I have honestly the most amazing guests. I was telling Rob before the show, 
how overjoyed I still am after 16 years. Like how lucky am I to show up for this masterclass with some of the greatest minds? So and this week is just as special. Sign up, subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, please leave a comment and a like as well. And I will tell you now ahead of time that next week on the show, I'll be featuring the amazing Corinne Grillo. She's been on before and she's just released her second book. And she's going to be talking about angel wealth magic. Corinne is an angel healer, a teacher, a psychotherapist, and a spiritual instigator. She's a very cool personality. And I think you'll love her yet again. Um, so I'm readying some of my questions for Rob. And once again, for those of you who may be just tuning in, I've got on the show Rob Gautier, and he's a professional channel for Pleiadian, ET, and Arc Angelic Consciousness. He has channeled thousands of ET races for individuals all over the world. And I just want to give out his website because I don't know about you, but when he was talking earlier in the show about his private sessions, I've actually never heard that before. So I've never heard of someone who channels and can channel beings, star family of yours, or beings you're connected to, or someone who keeps appearing or a guide or, or whatever the manifestation is, or whatever questions, as he mentioned, you could have about your life or relationships. That sounded uber cool to me, uh, to have a session like that. I know you can book them on his website and it is his name. It's R O B. And his last name is G as in George G A U. T H I E R dot com. So you can look for your own session there. And I also want to mention that I am going to be at the contact in the desert coming up. So anybody who's going to be there, come by, say hello. Um, I'll be there as press media. And that is going to be held in. Is it Indian Wells? Yeah, in Indian Wells out by Palm Springs. It's really soon. So um, you can still get tickets. And even though their actual hotel is sold out, you can book a nearby hotel. That's what we had to do. Is And the walk is like half a mile or a mile. Or you could drive your car from hotel to hotel. Anyway, it's going to be amazing. You know, it is one of the biggest uh, UFO ET events. They've got the biggest speakers. They've got some amazing people who are showing up there. So I'm very excited about it. And um, there's a few people I haven't heard or connected with yet that will be there that I'm excited to hear and connect with. And what's on your mind? I have to say, um, I did that solo show and you guys were so beautiful about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the encouragement you gave me in delivering just like stream of consciousness for an hour. And, um, it was big as I shared with you, I was really uncomfortable going into it. I was trying to find a guest to take the place of somebody who literally didn't show up at the last minute because she had a death in the family. And, it was just one of those weird things, but I knew in the back of my mind when nobody else was showing up, well, very hard to book somebody in two minutes. Like, can you do a live show? Very hard. Could have happened though. Anything's possible. Miracles, easy. Manifestation, easy. But when it wasn't easy, I went, oh my God. It's kind of like that story I told earlier where I said, uh, I got the message about being a healer. And it was the same kind of feeling like I was getting this message yeah, you need to do a solo show. You really need to start, just keep showing up for your, your beautiful subscribers, right? And connect with them. These are your people. And so I was very grateful to have done it, just done it. And very grateful for how beautiful you all were in your comments and your love and your support and how much you said you enjoyed it. So I will do it again. And, uh, come visit you more often. I'm getting really close. You know, I'm able to turn this channel into um, a membership channel. So I'm getting, it's just about time, frankly, because I already have the numbers, but I am getting close to doing that. And then I want to create some beautiful merchandise um, that says dare to dream, you know, 
And so I have lots of ideas around that. I'm also going to be speaking in December in Mexico City, Mexico, December 1st through 3rd at the World Congress UFOlogy event. And there's going to be magnificent people there as well. Looking forward to that. And then next year, as always in February, I will be at the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo. So, so many good things coming up. And the other thing I'm thinking about, uh, it was really funny when Rob was sharing this earlier, and he was saying, you know, if anybody had told him in 2005, he'd be doing this uh, work that he'd be like, you're on stronger drugs than I am. That's hilarious. And not only did he have that feeling, but now that he's in it doing it, this is his livelihood, right? He's got a wife, he's got two kids, he's got a, a full life like everybody else, roof over his head, food to put on the table. And, and it's a lot, right? You do an event and it's a beautiful thing, but what goes into the event, it's a lot of work. And I, I was chuckling listening to him because I mentioned to you guys, I'm going to do this webinar and I'm doing it because showing up for spiritual messengers and showing them how to do this stuff to create ease, finances, clients, all of that, all the reasons why you came here, you came here to serve, right? That's a part of why you came here. And you wouldn't be gifted if you didn't. And I totally resonated with what he said, because there's a part of me that's like, uh, I got to write, you know, I got to write the agenda for how the webinar is going to go. And I, I have to hire someone to do a landing page so people can sign up and do it. And I like, it's have to, like you hear my energy around it. It's not fun energy because the fun for me is doing the webinar. The fun for me is showing up and hanging out with you guys and helping you go from wherever you are to somewhere else. And wherever you are means you, you have never done a podcast before and you'd really like to learn, but you're shut out and don't really know how. That's one way I help you. The other way I help you is you've done podcasts. You have been interviewed. And guess what? The needle ain't moving. Nothing's happening in your space. What I mean by that is you're not getting results such as people signing up on your website, your database gets increased. You have a new tribe who's reaching out to you. You're selling online programs. You're selling books. You're selling workshops and, and more. There's so much more that gets created, but PR is freaking fabulous and free. And when you learn how to do it, it is like this magic kingdom you walk into. Things you want to create will be created and things you never dreamed of will be created. It's happened for me. It happens for my clients, I promise you. And visibility begets visibility. I've seen it with my own eyes, meaning you show up and you do the work to become visible. Like I represent my clients. They start becoming way more visible, way more interviewed. And at some point that turns around and I don't have to work so hard for my clients anymore. They don't have to work so hard at all because they are so visibly known and recognize that now the invitations are coming to them. It has happened to me. It has happened to my clients. It will happen to you. So yes. And the other piece of it is, uh, you know, doing the PowerPoint. Do I want to do the PowerPoint? So for me, all that minutia, exactly what Rob described. Like you have to do that piece of life as an entrepreneur. And for me, my fun is in connecting with you. That's the bottom line. Just being with you, that's everything. But the business aspect, it's kind of like the little kid in me is like, I don't want to. I don't want to. It's like, I really have to convince her. Like, what I have to do with her, actually, if this is helpful to you, I have to take her to the finish line and go look what happens when we do this. And then I get to see all your faces and I get to see what gets created by it. And that's beautiful for me. So I have to go there to go, okay, doing this is going to create all the fun. So know that I am doing a webinar. And if it is right for you, then join. Go to debbie-inger.com, sign up. I'd love you to join. And it looks like Rob is back with us. Hercules. So Rob, let's unmute you and bring you back. All right. All right, everybody. So uh, 
I'm going to connect now and you'll, you'll hear a little breathing and oming and uh, then I'm going to bring in Ardif because he connects quicker. Uh, so have fun. We'll see you on the other side. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate having me on. Here we go. <clears throat> And I've already checked with Rob before this, and he said, it's okay if I talk over while he is getting prepared. And one of the beautiful things he does as he's aligning with the energy is he starts toning. And for anybody who knows this music, I was introduced through my mother, a musician when I was young. It's Tuvan from Mongolia. That's my experience of it. Amazing. And just see if you can feel the energy too while he's doing that. And another reason why I'm talking periodically is because when the show goes to radio, just a little bit of trivia for you guys in radio, if there's silence or perceived silence, the automated playing of a radio show will interpret that something happened to the show and it'll shut it off and bring in another show very quickly. So there's never dead air. So I just want to make sure that there's no dead air also for radio. But for those of you who also who love um, some of the current Viking music that's out there, which <clears> I think <throat> is pretty rad, it sounds like this. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Greetings, Debbie. This is Aldridif. That is A R I D I F. And this is its spell. We understand that we have many queries for this day, but before diving in to those queries, there are two things in which we wish to express. The first, above and beyond all things that are expressed in this day, to know, to feel, and to perceive that you are loved and our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, it is our greatest excitement and within that same form of great excitement in which we co-create with you, not only you, but collectively all of you who are co-creating with us in this moment as well. And of course, you may begin your queries at your leisure. Thank you, first of all, so much for joining us. I was curious about who would choose to come through and I welcome you. And my first question is, can you tell us about yourself, what you look like, where you live, do you have family and what your job is? 
Yes, of course, first of all, to your own physical perspective and from your sensory perception, you would not be able to perceive us. But if you are in dimension that is highly above yours, you would perceive in sixth density layer of consciousness our own race that exist in the star system that you understand as Dinib. And Dinib is placed effortlessly and most brightly in the constellation that all of you know as Cygnus. Now, of course, the energy that is within our co created collective consciousness is not same as your human collective consciousness, but the identifiable markers for the physicality of our structure dimensionally hold approximately three foot and nine inches of height. The coloration of our own skin is that which is pale blue in your color palette. Of course, the hair and eyes are purple in nature, and of course our eyes are much greater in size proportion to the face than yours is as well. Now, of course, different forms, physicality, are marked throughout the entire expression of our physicality, but those are the most notable and most understand by the human collective in comparison to that of your average human. But as you well aware the consciousness behind human to human variety is much greater than our own collective, where the variety is much smaller and the connection between our own consciousness is the reason why it manifests in such ways. Early in our own race's history, the energy of our physical appearance from one to another was much more drastically different. And of course, the reason was our consciousness was further apart from one another. And as our collective became cohesive, so too to the attributes of our physicality. Now, of course, job, this is a construct that is very human in nature and one that shows your commitment to doing one energy and expressing your energy through the consensus of what others may agree upon, or for those of you who are specifically empowered to open your energy for the individuality that is your consciousness, you may find an energy that not everyone agrees is needed and act upon that energy. Our own collective consciousness is more so as your singular consciousness would be. We simply exist and our own desires drive the passion of our energy and direct us to what job that we may do in that moment. For this experience, our own energy of co-creation is my own excitement. This is why we've dedicated parts of our own energy in co-creating with human collective consciousness. And through this moment, working with Rob to speak directly to in that way. Are you concerned for us, humanity as a collective? And do you have a message for us, something we may not know that we really ought to pay attention to that could help us right now? Yes, of course, there are no needs for us to be concerned or worried about your collective consciousness, all of you are the same as our own consciousness, yes. Our physicality, much different, yes. The dimensional layers in which our physical bodies exist are much different, yes. But behind all of the physicality, the souls remain equal to one another, creator forms of consciousness who manifest physical appearance in order to operate a system that is known as physicality itself, and done so for the experience of co-creation with other entities who have chosen to do the same. And why would one choose to do that in any form? Well, of course, the experience of opening yourself to separation in order to find more of yourself vitally important, all of consciousness that exists in this universe alone is one consciousness, and that consciousness divided upon billions and trillions and billions of times collectively in order for physical experience to hold manifestation 
of the individual galactic collective consciousnesses broken down, fractalized further into the solar system collectives within the galactic form of collective and each planet does the same. And once the planet is divided, largely enough, the singular consciousness takes hold and that is where the individual lies. Now this experience collectively and within your own persons will create within the dynamic of co-creation of others. Yet each of you hold that creator inside of you. The Earth Collective Consciousness has gone through catastrophes many times, but it was never something to be concerned. It was simply the collective form of all entities that lived upon Earth desiring a new experience to unfold, and that was the catalyst for the unfolding. Humans express their desire to understand and know, will we end in catastrophe? Will we end in ascension? This is for your own consciousness to work. This is for yourself as a singular entity to choose the version of reality that you desire, and as a collective, no matter what, whether it be annihilation in moments notice or thriving through six density and restarting your incarnation cycle. There's beauty and mastery in both and both are appropriate conditions to experience physical reality as well. The message that we share with you is the one that we just have shared. Remind yourself the creatorship in which you hold and you will find yourself creating in a much more intentional fashion. Mm, beautiful. I've heard that the Yael revealed that there's a new hybrid race coming online called the Gael, and that the Gael hybrids will be the first ambassadors to humanity. Do you have any details about that? And if so, when are the Gael coming online? Yes, first of all, the Gael exists already in this moment with physical bodies, but the population of this race is not extremely large, such as those of the Yol-Yel. But the energy that is surrounding their own consciousness holds the highest probability of those that would first co-create with humans. But of course, these are simply children of the Yol-Yel, and the Yol-Yel being children of the Plal-Yel, and the Plal-Yel being children of Sasami, and onward it goes. This is part of the hybridization program, asset co-creation field of energy. Of course, they would wish to co-create with humans, as humans are where they find the genetics in which can create their own race and sustain that of their original co-creation and desire. So with that energy, the population of the Goliath are exploding at this moment and gaining more and more entities that are existing in that incarnation cycle. Some of these are human souls who are done being human and desire to have their extra dimensional or extraterrestrial co-creative moment. So have chosen to incarnate into the physical body of that which was genetically related to their previous incarnation. Others are races throughout the galactic collective consciousness who hold a greater desire to co-create with humans than what had been done before. So, of course, the experience of the soul is upon one level of creation and the physicality will much more be evolved with humans' desire to co-create. In the free will of the human collective consciousness, in the last many years, you have opened yourself more so in a desire to co-create with that which was extraterrestrial in nature and extra dimensional nature and now you are creating the possibility of co-creants for the same peel of your own experience of growth and expansion and of course the all yell are more than happy to oblige in that co-creation and this is how the goal yell started beautiful do we individually have agreements with other entities, energies, or beings? And if so, how does that manifest? 
Yes, of course, first of all, each human that is living in this moment holds not only an extraordinary amount of entities that can be connected to your higher fractal consciousness and be a part of your psychic networking, but are also working in the capacity of that which is general guides. They are giving guidance upon your sleep states. They are giving guidance to your intuition. They are co-creating with your higher self in order for your higher self to share more energy into your conscious awareness in your day-to-day -day expressions. And of course, these entities are multitudes of different forms of manifestation consciousness, part of the oversoul expression of consciousness. This means that all of you have several human guides that work with you that are not physically incarnated in this moment. This means all of you have extraterrestrial guides. All of you have beings that exist as humanoids, as reptilians, as avian consciousness, and as all of the other archetypes in which you've seen, some that create fear within your mindset, others that create joy in your mindset, yet all of them are within your oversoul and all of them have a connection with your consciousness. Many of you recognize fear within yourself immediately when perceiving certain archetypes and with humans, reptilian and insectoid are the two greatest offenders for the fear co-creation with human beings. But many of these entities are not, as you would see, malevolent in nature, nor do they fear co-creating with you for your own co-creation of fear. Many of these entities are type two beings that are within the central portion of benevolency and malevolency. But to your own consciousness, they hold great allegiance. To their own consciousness, they hold a great deal of love for you because they are connected to you. Even though knowing that if that connection were ever presented to your own self, that it would create fear. And that is why the entities may stand further back in line of beings who desire for you to co-create until you have healed the traumas that resolved inside the fear, co-creating with your own energy, knowing that all of you have the ability to connect through your oversoul from your higher fractal consciousness to any form of being that you desire. It's very important for you to understand and know if your true desire is to expand and understand the nature first, of your own consciousness and secondly, the nature of physical reality altogether. Hmm. I've been told that the inception of my soul galactically was Elohim, co-creator. And I've always been curious, are there latent or unknown Elohim abilities that I have that I haven't explored or used? Are there gifts that I can use in this lifetime connected to having been or concurrently are Elohim? Yes, first of all, you have a great deal of that Elohim co-creative energetic field. This is partially due to the nature of your expression. Each human holds part of that energy embedded within their own DNA as Elohim were one of the 12 races, DMAs that you hold inside of you, and the Pleiadian forms of energy, reptilian forms, Syrian forms, Arcturian forms, these are why these races resonate with the majority of the co-creative collective consciousness and within your own energy, because you are a person of great excitement and a person who holds a great interest in curiosity, that is why it has activated your Elohim energy and your auric field more so than in most other humans. Other humans may present their Syrian form of energy from their DNA that is equal in all of you, but present that form of vibration externally more so. This is the reason why all of the entities that are Elohim in your own oversoul 
are more connected with you directly and who co-create with you from the lineage of your own incarnations. Now, of course, the latent form of expression that humans do not know or understand in whole about the Elohim forms of energy is that they are extraordinarily creative. Scientifically, they are easily able to produce a co-creation from the metaphysical understanding to that which is embedded in scientific understanding. There are great talents that lie deep within you when it comes to the scientific field of co-creating from the metaphysical understanding. And by co-creating a bridge within your own excitement and curiosity through those means, there's a great deal of information that has not been exposed to you at this moment that can come to you easily in that way. Mm, yummy. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, for people who are excited about this conversation, about you, about connecting with your amazing energy right now and your insights, and we have this feeling, I so want to call in benevolent extraterrestrial beings. I want to call in star family. You mentioned star guides, and we're ready to make contact on a more conscious level, or even maybe a lucid dream level. How can we actually get something like that started so it creates a real connection, a real dialogue, te telepathy, whatever it would be for connection, wisdom, guidance, exchanging love, all of that. Yes, of course, each of you living throughout your own excitement is paramount for you to experience your psychic networking. Now, of course, having your psychic networking open within you does not only require excitement, it requires you understanding and knowing yourself more deeply. So in order for you to explore the parts of your own consciousness that are most important, that would be to focus upon your present moment. Now, of course, there is a formula to understanding how to work inside of the system of physical reality that creates the greatest opportunity for you to express yourself and explore the consciousness in the most expansive way. And following that energy, of course, opens the psychic networking because your psychic networking is the most natural form of yourself and your consciousness, the soul, integrated in the form of co-creating part of your excitement with your presence in your now moment with allowing yourself no expectations in your manifestation of quality and reinforcing limitless beliefs that you hold with the positive thought processes and supportive thought energy is of course that opening the form of co-creating with your most natural self. First of all, accept that which is your natural self and be that natural self in the moment. Now, of course, there are trillions of techniques that humans understand alone that open many pathways inside of your psychic network. And those pathways will be found differently by each and every one of you, even if you are reading from the same manuscript, so to say. But reading through the manuscript of how you open your own consciousness before entering the understanding of how to work with techniques comes being your present self, being your true self, and living in your truth within that excitement as well. Now, of course, grounding to the earth energy of vital importance because you are a member of the earth co-created collective consciousness and that energy itself opens your body's ability to be connected while you are reaching to the ether with your higher chakra form. And once you achieve your grounded energy, then start working with your higher fractal consciousness now, of course, higher self and higher fractal consciousness are the same words interchangeably, but utilizing it from your fractal perspective shows you your pathway outbound. And what we mean by this 
if you understand that your higher self is a larger part of your consciousness, then you would be able to understand that the oversoul in all iterations within are a larger part of your higher fractal consciousness itself, and then understand that your earth collective consciousness is a larger part of your oversoul's collective consciousness, and knowing that your galaxy is the larger part of the earth, and that the universe is a larger part of the galactic energy. And once you understand that all is interconnected and understand that your gateway to the greater theoretical universe lies in your crown chakra and connects to your higher self, then you will have explored all of the things that are prerequisite to your opening your psychic network. Ooh. Are there gemstones or objects that would be helpful to humanity right now? And if so, should we wear them? Should we have them around the house? Gemstones or objects that we might be able to use for greater good? Yes, of course, utilization of all tools that are within your belief system, that are within the bounds of possibility of no expectation and hold a great deal of resonance with your self-use. Your gemstones, crystals, are one of the rare exceptions that even without belief hold and support energy. It is a recorder of information Vibrationally, it absorbs what is around and holds that vibration clearly. For the reutilization of that same form of energy or the use of that energy at a later time to integrate with the consciousness who utilizes or uses that form. So utilizing any crystal form that resonates with you will work, but specifically, if you are working with crystals that you'll desire to work in channeled states or in telepathic states, we recommend the utilization of modified and utilize holding that within the body's auric field, touching your skin and holding it upon you at all times. Now, this is a very strong grounding form of crystal energy and it will hold your vibration to the earth very deeply. Many of you who are etheric in nature will have a very difficult time adjusting if you are a sensitive person or if you are highly empathic. Mm. The other crystal to utilize in counterbalance to that energy, there are multitudes, but for human beings and this moment, the utilization of amethyst and the utilization of any quartz that is colored blue or purple will be of great use. Okay. Wow. Beautiful. And I have all of the above. So that's very, very helpful. I, I couldn't help but think, Ardiff, when you were speaking earlier, to ask you this question. And, and it's more of a thought than a question, but I'll do my best to make it into a question. I, but I've always had this curiosity about why well, I, I have this huge hmm, affinity and connection somehow with shamanism. I just love it. And I also love the fact that shamans and the indigenous for centuries have always pointed to and believed in the star nations. So that said, what is the connection between shamanism and the races outside of planet earth is there uh, something through shamanism that will assist that loving benevolent connection is shamanism a conduit any thoughts about that yes of course first of all shamanism is true form of earth co-creation in the magical sense of co-creation you are unlocking all of what is true in the capacity and potential of human consciousness when working with shamanism energy. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, that is within the vibration of the earth energy itself. 
the energy that is grounded, just as your motivated crystals, the shamanism form of energy. It is the lower chakra high vibration of understanding that potential. Whereas those who work in etherical senses and the utilization of channeled forms of energy are working with the etheric form, a potential of human consciousness in the earth vibration field. So of course, both are to counterbalance to one another. Now those who are naturally inclined to connect with the earth will understand and know the shamanic practice works with the entire form of their consciousness, just as the channeled state will but it is where the feeding of the energy comes from that differentiates the form of shamanism and channeling. Now the reason early shamans of your earth spoke of the star nation, the reason why it feels so deeply integrative is that during your history, many races of our own collective consciousness and other races that existed outside of ours had visited earth and co-created with what you perceive as indigenous persons and in our co-creation with earlier forms of human beings we shared the potential that we perceived was possible for the entities that existed now of course we are not the only race that visit earth and earth has had co-created with many thousands of years of co-creation and the form of integration and with each visitation of that co-creation came another form of understanding from the earth collective and another call out to the universe for all who wish to co-create with humans to come and enter a co-creational relationship now many races require the permission of the entire collective before engaging our race was one at that time of your earth history, it was a simple understanding that those that existed in the heavens, that is your sky, were those that co-created from a place of brotherhood, place of sisterhood, and a place of alignment to the human co-created collective consciousness. From that connection, bred the furthering of shamanic practice from one human to another and integrate deeper levels of etherical understanding from a very earth-centric form of creation. And that is why your own energy is called to shamanism greatly. The curiosity, your connection to the earth and in this incarnation, in your oversoul, there sounds many vibration incarnations of your past lives in which shamanism was the forefront of your experience oh my goodness thank you so much for that yeah i've done some past life regressions that were successful because <laughs> i was always kind of weird about past life regressions but i've done some after i felt that connection with shamanism and i saw very strongly um, both female and male uh, very different lifetimes and just such a beautiful way to live. And thank you for that confirmation. Yes, I, of course. Hmm. I want to ask you one last question on behalf of all the listeners, and that's about multidimensionality. So I think we're all aware of it. There's time is there's only a now right there's really not a past and a present and that there are multiple lifetimes upon lifetimes going on plus multiple choices that create a different concurrent path and lifetime which is phenomenal really to try to comprehend and so for people who really want to embrace our galactic selves, our multidimensional selves, our cosmic heritage, and just expand into that reality, which I think is a very high vibrational cosmic energy, how can we do that right now? What don't we know that would allow us to elevate and actually function in that space? 
Yes, first of all, to understand and know what multidimensionality is, is an important part of the process of integrating that consciousness. Yes, there are all multidimensions within the universal collective consciousness. And yes, there are multiple timelines for different entities that exist in different realms of their own existence and of their co-creative existence, of course but multidimensionality that we have shared previous exists within the structure of DNA in which your physical body holds. Human beings are fully multidimensional in nature. Not all races that exist in the universe are. Mm. Many races hold the capacity to reach above their own consciousness through their own higher fractal consciousness. And that integration process opens the ability for them to perceive higher reality. Humans hold all dimensional forms of energy inside of their DNA from the races that created their own DNA portion, energy inside of your own physical structure. So, of course, it holds the capacity to be in all densities and all dimensions. With your physical structure, most of humanity has lived through the third density of experience, yet there are operating and separate functional portions of your own higher self that work independent of yourself. All of you have fourth density fractals of consciousness in your higher fractal consciousness. All of you have fifth density fractals within your higher self, all of you hold six density fractals within your higher self, all of them, separate part of a component that is collective and cohesive as your entire higher self. When you enter your dream state, you are entering these parts of your own consciousness. When we shared previously that the formula to Manifest what you desire, your experience is the same as your psychic networking. So too does that energy apply for finding your multidimensionality. You must first understand you are creator, understand that these parts of your consciousness exist and are perfect and are connected to you and have no separation from you to start with. The only separation that you have from your higher self in whole, all the fractals within, in the densities above yourself, are of course your perspective of separation. By unfolding the different layers of yourself and then expanding outward into all layers of your consciousness, all of the multidimensionality applied to you and are easily able to be co-created with. Does that necessitate some level of healing in order to make that access to the higher levels and connect with those fourth, fifth, sixth density fractals? If your desire is to connect upwardly in the dimensional form and expand and do so with the greatest good involved, then yes, but expanding into those places do not require healing. Mm. There are many of wounded persons who are able to communicate with their higher self. Mm. There are many traumatized humans who are highly psychic in nature. But if you desire to integrate those parts of your consciousness in to your daily expression and use that higher dimensionality in your physical experience, then of course, yes. The traumas will be worked upon. The integration of your higher self into your physical body is the form of what most humans perceive as enlightenment. This focus that humans hold upon making their selves expand, healing must occur in order for that expansion to stay with you, of course. Mm, healing must occur, and that there are already traumatized people, very psychic and connection, connected to their higher selves. And I didn't realize that not every race was multidimensional. I didn't realize that humanity was one of 
however many that could do that or are that. That's, thank you. This was very interesting. Ardiff, I feel like I just made a new friend and I'm very grateful you came and spent this time with us. Thank you for your wisdom and guidance. Yes, of course. We wish to express to all of you that it is a great pleasure to have co-created with you and of course with yourself, Debbie, as well. We also wish to express that as we have co-created with you in this day, you have asked queries of your collective energy that we have never perceived before. And because all of us are connected and all of us are one, this allows us to perceive parts of our own consciousness that we have never perceived previously. This means as you are expanding, growing, so too do we. We congratulate you for your expansion and we thank you for giving us that expansion as well. We bid you do for this day, and of course, you are loved. Mm, how very beautiful. That was remarkable. And we'll wait for Rob Gautier to come back. I want to give his website out again as he reintegrates into his being. It's robgautier.com, R-O-B-G-A-U-T-H-I-E-R.com. Also, you can find him on Instagram. And then his link tree is there, which of course has the connections to all the amazing things he does. How are you, Rob? I'm, I'm good. How did everything go? That was so remarkable. I can't wait for you to hear it. And I have to say, I'm extremely moved by what Ardiff said at the very end. I don't believe any any other being that's been channeled has ever come through and said the questions actually helped them perceive more of themselves and expand out in a new way. And I mean, that's also a very um, creator being kind of connection too, right? That's why the creator decided all of us would come out and leave, live these wild, mad lives to understand more of itself. So that was pretty profound. Yeah, the Ardiff is um, pretty amazing. I don't know if you guys got a chance to talk to Treb too, but um, Ardiff is, uh, when he says that to people, and it's it does kind of blow their, their minds. But if you think about it, you know, um, he's really, he's not human. So understanding the human part, makes him understand the whole better too you know mm -hmm. like the universe is uh pretty interesting and when you find a piece of it it can make it grow when he said that first um to someone and i heard him say it it blew me away i was like wow i never thought that i'd be teaching something to a a sixth density being you know like the mastery level at where sixth density is it's it's like uh, as close to all knowing as you can get without being all knowing, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful and gracious too. Um, I really appreciated that. And I want for the listeners and the viewers to ask you, do you have anything coming up? What do you have coming up? What kind of events or how can people connect with you? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, first of all, the, the easiest way to, to find me or get a hold of me is through my website. Uh, robgothier.com is one of them. But if you type in etwhisper.com, it'll take you to the same place. It's probably easier for people to remember that. Um, the website links you to the YouTube. Any Anything that you put ET Whisper in on my account uh, and social media, it'll link to me um so facebook and twitter all that stuff um uh, on the website there's a place to contact that's probably the best place to contact us if, if you're excited about something uh, but but my youtube channel is where to go if you want to look at our channeling more because there's uh like hundreds of free channelings up uh, even channeling classes if you want to learn how to channel um i have two free classes on my youtube channel you can go check out uh things coming up um, I too will be at the Conscious Life Expo. Uh, I haven't announced that on my website or publicly yet. Um, this will be the first place I, I said it. I said I think I said it last night too on my on my radio show. But um, 
yeah, come check us out there. And then I do a, a podcast too. It's uh, Enlightenment Evolution Hour. I do it Wednesdays at 10 uh, p.m. Eastern and 7 Pacific. Debbie's going to be joining me uh, this coming week, right? Yeah. I think it's this week. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be amazing. I really love that. Next week. I, I, next week, I think it's like the 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Next week. Yeah, absolutely. So I, that's something I love to do. Um, as a channeler, I don't get to be part of the conversation that much. Uh, and this gives me a chance to to explore some things with my guests who, who usually um, have something that they're very good at or, or just have a story to share. And it's really a story oriented show. I, re I really enjoy it. Um, and people I've had amazing guests on there, too. So uh, that's 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 about it. Uh, I've got more things coming up, but I'll, I'll be announcing those through my website uh, and social media coming soon. I, I don't have specifics on those yet, but they're all you coming. do also have a sexual healing program. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that Thank looked really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Sexual healing. And books. You have books. <laughs> and some books too. Yeah. Um, I got uh, sexual healing and uh, learning to channel are two courses um, that uh, have been done recently uh, this year. And both of them are truly, really deeply amazing uh, channeled material that dive in one topic. Plus the, the learning to channel is something that I did uh, in teaching and had channeling um, from Trevor Menardif. Um, and uh, books, yeah, all of our books are on the website. Um, I, I, I think it's a secondary page on the homepage, you have to go down. But if you type in uh, my name into Amazon, you'll, you'll be able to find the books. Um, uh, and I was featured in a couple other people's books, but... Um, yeah, you can put in my name and the word book on Amazon and you'll find there's quite a few of them Excellent. that are out there now. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of those. I yeah. It. Well, it's amazing when you keep creating and you, you lose track of all you've already created. But yeah, I was checking all of that out for sure. And this is Dare to Dream, Rob. What are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Right now, um, we have two kids and, and both of them have uh, some special needs. My son's is pretty severe and our daughters and our daughters has been, uh, she just had a surgery yesterday, right? Um, so we're taking care of our kids. Uh, and since the baby's been born, we haven't been able to do a lot publicly beyond online. And um, just recently, uh, thanks to you, Debbie, too, um, the energy uh for me going out and about like the conscious life expo so that's what we're doing next um doing more things in person by the end of this year i think personal sessions one-on-one -on -one will be done um i think i'm moving on i've been trying to to do that for a couple of years now um but it wasn't the time um now i think we're going to focus more on courses online events and, and going out and about uh, and doing our, our daughter's old enough and this is the last surgery she needed um, she's had three and this will be the last one she'll need um, for a while and she is a traveler so we're going to take her around with us and uh, we're going to hit the road and that's what I, I'm dreaming big now so uh, with a little help from my friends right exactly because the world is so ready for you Rob and um excited for all you're going to be creating. I see it for you. I know it for you. And for all of us who will benefit from it, thank you so, so much for all your generosity today and for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to having you on my show too. And the roles will be reversed. We'll get to talk about your, your life and your story and, and have a really fun time. Thank you so much, everybody too, who listened. I appreciate it. I end today's show with this quote from Dr. Fema Bryant Davis. Pay attention to your patterns. The ways you learn to survive may not be the ways you want to continue to live, heal, and shift. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know you got so much out of it. Write in the comments because I can't wait to hear how you resonated with what Rob shared, with what Artif shared, and just all the brilliance that today was for us as co-creators. Dare to dream and create all your dreams into your reality.